the topic is azolla importance of sheep and goat nutrition actually uh, my experience is mainly with azolla and its feeding to cattle and buffaloes but as a nutritionist i have an assessment how if something is proven in cattle and buffaloes how it can be applied to sheep and goat uh, because my exact experience with sheep and goat is not that much but i'm sure uh, whatever benefits we have in cattle and buffalo similar benefits we can expect in sheep and goat my association with azolla is is 20 years back i was trained in azolla cultivation and i was trained by the very scientist dr kamalasanan pillai he is a phd in botany at uh, vivekananda kendra kanyakumari natural resource development project nadep whatever method he standardized he has trained so many people among them i belong to the first uh, first batch from andhra pradesh in this 20 years in this azolla cultivation technique i trained farmers development workers veterinarians in many districts of uh, andhra pradesh and outside andhra pradesh also and wherever i am posted i maintained an azolla plot as a source of seed uh, here i will discuss what are the myths regarding azolla many articles popular articles we find it as a substitute to the feed from my side what i say is it's a blunder that azolla is described as an alternative to the feed even if you feed 1 kg azolla to animal don't reduce even a 50 grams of the feed another myth is azolla is a source of protein maybe azolla is good source of protein but because of its negligible dry matter even protein supply is negligible so feeding dried azolla i don't recommend because for every 1 kg dry azolla we need to dry at least 15 kg of fresh azolla and in the process of drying we may not get all the benefits of feeding fresh azolla biomass uh, why not as an alternative feed some of the articles say that 1 kg azolla can replace half a kg feed so let me give a calculation feed dry matter is 90% azolla dry matter is 6 to 8% so if we give 1 kg of azolla we are giving hardly 60 to 80 grams of dry matter so with this if we reduce half kg or 1/4 of the kg or 250 grams what we are doing is we are harming the animal this is the plain calculations and drying is likely to reduce the benefits because azolla is less researched for this bioactive compounds but Uh, most of the bioactive compounds in dairy games are likely to lose their activity while drying azolla has 25% crude protein it is true but dry matter basis again it will be negligible so each kg of fresh azolla has 60 to 80 grams of dry matter of which 15 to 20 grams of protein so 15 to 20 grams of protein is less than 5% of typical low producing cow or buffalo so we should not treat azolla as a replacement of feed or a source of protein this is the diagram only 4 days back we have dried that much azolla biomass and we got this much dried azolla and this is so light even if I, if we put on a ceiling fan it is blown away so it is like a dusty mass so we dried more than 80 grams and we recovered only 4 grams of dry azolla this was only four days back in our own laboratory why should we treat, treat azolla as a source of nutrients i consider this as a multi mineral multi vitamin tonic it can be a source of critical amino acids because few milligrams of amino acids can enhance the biological value of other proteins so amino acids we can rely upon and the mineral composition of azolla vary from plot to plot and a day to day also because we can see from the uh, size of the azolla leaf whether it is sufficient in mineral mineral composition we can sense it for example in the beginning we add mineral mixer and after one week we can sense the reduction of leaf size we replenish and within two days we can find its evidence in the form of azolla's leaf size or brightness of the green color and another character of azolla is it is very young 
because its doubling time is 3 days that means whatever azalla we we harvest its age is less than 6 days so it is very young and biologically active so only mature stages of precipitated minerals so all the minerals in azalla can be treated as soluble so if we go to typical composition of azalla it is uh cp is 21 to 30% on dry matter basis so 1 kg of fresh biomass may produce a, give a, around 20 grams crude fiber 9 to 12 here azalla looks like roughage but in reality it is a concentrate either extract like any other typical grass it is less ash content is more nfe and zinc and copper so 1 kg of azalla biomass may, may supply around 4 mg of zinc and 1 mg of copper my recommendation and my experience with azalla is for sheep and goat uh, sheep and goat what i recommend based on my experience with cattle and buffalo adult ewar dog 200 g of fresh azalla per day i can anticipate health general health cyclicity in reproductive cycles and milk yield so when even though have a better milk yield that is reflected on growth of lamb market in a healthier way breeding grams and bucks we can go for 250 grams a day and their libidity libido and fertility is expected to increase and growing lamb every around 150 to 200 grams so commercial benefits are guaranteed and here since i am from scientific community what my experience suggest is there are many products which are practically and economically useful to the farmers whereas as a nutritionist if i conduct a trial with 5 or 10 animals even the 10% difference benefits are statistically insignificant so here there is a uh, there is a contradiction between a declared scientific benefit and practical economic uh, observation so not that somebody is right right or somebody is wrong but the interpretations are slightly different between a commercial farmer and a uh, lab bound scientist this is true for many products containing zinc vitamin d which are extensively used by poultry and uh, small livestock sector but once i conduct a trial my differences are insignificant so the benefits which i witnessed while working with azolla and dairy farmers so this will understand how it can be true for small ruminants A lactating buffalo with four liters of milk and seven percent of fat. So milk fat price, suppose if it is seven hundred uh, uh, rupees per kg fat, that means a ten percent fat milk recovers seventy seventy rupees per liter. And here a seven percent fat milk has forty nine rupees for four liters. It is one ninety six. Without reducing any other nutrients, if I feed one kg azolla per day. around 200 ml of milk is increased and 0.5% fat was hiked so the net price is 52 rupees per liter and with this i am getting an extra 20 rupees or 25 rupees more than my earlier in net income here if we feed 2 kg azolla the benefits may not increase anything so that's why i am saying it is a tonic tonic means if somebody says give, give 5 ml there will be benefit give 10 ml there may not be benefit and sometimes there could be complications also especially if we feed excess calcium or excess vitamin d there could be complications so in case of cow volume of milk increase is more and snf is also in observed in in case of cow and commercial benefits are in proportion with buffalo the cost benefit ratio azolla main product production cost is mostly labor because initial investment is negligible and operational cost is negligible the only thing is every day we have to attend it so if we put if if i assume one labor can produce 100 100 kg of azolla per day so my main cost is around 500 rupees 5 rupees per kg the cost benefit ratio of Uh, if a farmer is cultivating and feeding the cost benefit ratio is 4 in the sheep again i anticipated the uh, benefits that is in flushing ration 
definitely it is going to enhance the flock fertility and it is likely to reduce interlambing periods and lamb birth weight is likely to increase and when same azolla is continued for lactating ewes nursing ewes then because of better milk production the lamb growth till weaning would be even if it is by by the time of weaning the net net gain is 1 kg as live weight the commercial benefits and reduction of mortality during suckling period these benefits are yet to be commercially standardized by a farmer only because these are right now i didn't work with any farmer but this is what i can confidently say and we have to check with an, an interested farmer how to establish the benefits if any farmer with 500 flock so what we can do is we can suggest them to azolla plots which will produce 100 kg per day and if they feed for one full year the farmer teaches us more than what we can teach him so initial investment each kg production unit plot would cost around 1000 rupees and running expenditure per 100 kg azolla one worker may be sufficient recurring cost compared to worker cost recurring cost in material is negligible because what we use is we use dung soil and mineral mix what are the materials required for azolla unit area 3 square meters and each 3 square meter produces 1 kg azolla per day and material required one silpalan sheet and bricks around 100 empty gunny bags as a protection layer mineral mixer initially 100 grams a cow dung or buffalo dung cow dung doesn't mean that it's only cow buffalo dung is also good enough and if any farmer is interested they can try with crushed droppings from small ruminants also and red soil because it is like it is less in organic matter and more more in minerals this is a typical 3 square meter azolla plot we have to arrange bricks in a rectangular fashion according to the sheet size the empty gunny bags are uh, will serve as a protection layer to protect the sheet main sheet from getting pores like uh, because of rough soil or thorns or any other thing and this is how we make it a an artificial pond or azolla plot and minimum 4 inch water that is soil that is dung and 100 grams of mineral mixer all these things can be mixed and a 4 inch water depth is required on this any live azolla will act as a fresh culture whatever we can feed we can sprinkle on a fresh azolla plot this is a fully grown azolla plot where water is not at all visible and if you check the growth rate this is the day one actually very recently i i got this exercise done by our internship students and the day one this is the azolla added to the plot this is day two we every 24 hours we got the photographs this is day 3 and this is day 4 almost day 5 so this is the stage from where we can harvest one third of the or one fourth of the azolla every day and next day it will reproduce or what we can do is if we establish four plots similar to this every day every plot harvest half of the azolla and leave it and rotate the plots on fourth day we will come back to the first plot and growth is and here i have kept a brick in a in a different dimension where i can get 4 inch depth so that brick will act as water level indicator if the level drops we have to add water so 3 square meter area that is 1 kg azolla production these are the materials and this is how we have to use so the procedure is place of construction should be flat and it should be smooth soil surface because otherwise the sheet will get pores and we will lose water and make a rectangular plot of 10 and 10 to 11 bricks long 6 to 7 bricks wide and 2 brick depth that gives 6 inch depth of which 4 inch will be water and spread the gunny bags on the brick so that the ground and sheet are protected and spread the silpalan sheet on gunny bags 
and spread the red soil on the silk pollen sheet. Make dung slurry mineral mixer and fill the water up to four inch depth. Add ajala culture to the plot and replenish water every day to four inches. In six to seven days, we can get a green, thicker, mat-like structure of ajala, and the root root length will be maximum one inch. And roots are like transparent hairs. Harvest one kg ajala every day as per the growth. What is maintenance requirement? Daily water level checking and replenish. Remove any dry organic matter falling on the plot because if any organic matter becomes wet. and decay it it is a source of fungal growth and once fungal growth dominates ajala it may be the plot will be damaged if we continuously harvest ajala for 15 days we can observe the leaf reduction of size and sometimes color will become pale sometimes color will become red also in such case what we can do is we can add 5 kg cow dung and 50 grams of mineral mixture that is half of the initial quantity within 2 to 3 days we can sense the increase in size of leaf and color brightness it go suppose depending on the ajala growth for 2 to 3 months we can do like this after that water will become jet black and if we take the bottom mud it will be like a coal tar or any other Are black ink. That means ajala plot has accumulated lot of organic matter and nitrogen. Roots also will become black. In such time, take out under our entire ajala. Use this water and mud for plants because it is a rich source of nitrogen and unabsorbed residual minerals. So they will be helpful to the plant. Use this plot content as a manure for plant. Repeat the day one procedure. Preferably with a sheet is inverse reversed. So whatever sheet now water water is touched, you have to invert so that it will be to the ground. And because now during this process, this sheet is likely to develop either fungal spores or algal spores, not at a dangerous level. But in order to avoid them, reverse the sheet. We can get fresh ajala growth on that. This procedure may be required once in three months. precautions any ajala farmer if we go what he says is ajala is like like a newborn baby that means its attendance doesn't need hard work but it attendance needs careful attention and every day we have to check at least for half an hour if water level is below 3 inch that is evaporation either osmolarity of the plot will increase or in summer lesser the water Weaker the heating time and ajala growth will reduce. Here, let me add one thing. In most of the ajala uh, popular articles, what they say is we need semi shade or we have to arrange shade net. Wherever I worked with ajala, I have established ajala plot in full broad uninterrupted daylight uh, sunlight, and I got good results. The only thing is we have to take care of water level. under shade net even 2 inch water is sufficient under broad sunlight if we maintain 4 inch water level the growth will also be better because of bright sunlight and we don't have the problem of growth and for semi shade the concept what farmers will do is they will put it under a nearby a tree so what will happen tree leaves are falling here and causing decay and maintenance problems so what i recommend is i don't recommend a shade net because it will increase cost i don't recommend a nearby tree it will increase maintenance problems or we have to put a mosquito net to screen the shade so simply you maintain minimum 4 inch water level in summer go for extra half inch because evaporation rate will be more you can put it on a terrace on a area anywhere broad daylight throughout the day is there and sometimes what will happen is if we bring the soil from canals or ponds or dried ponds it will be rich in algal spores once algae dominates naturally algae is a quick growing 
plant species compared to fern because ajal uh, ajala is a fern and algae is a fast growing fast growing primitive plant so once algae dominates uh, we cannot hope that ajala will grow better such in such case we have to discard the plot and repeat the process, fresh plot construction feeding harvestal ajala needs a washing because it has uh, some offensive smell with mud or muddy smell or dung smell so whatever way we wash leafy vegetables for kitchen we have to wash them and washed water we can use for replenishing in the ajala plot because every day ajala plot will witness 1 cm water level drop so what we can do is wash the harvested ajala pour the water in the plot and if if required you add more water and once ajala is free from mud smell or dung smell it can be fed along with the feed once animal develops taste in prefer mostly it will take a week then they may consume ajala directly i have seen uh, and a free animal directly going into ajala plot and may, eating from the plot directly that means if animal develops taste even unwashed ajala is also consumed but i don't recommend because it contain it can contain some uh, undesirable microbes uh, with this uh, my topic uh, whatever i i have to speak i finished